This is a podcast from the Nuffield Department of Medicine. Today we speak with Dr. Buddha Basnet about his research on high altitude illness. Hello. Hi. Hello. What is altitude illness? Altitude illness is like a hangover, all right, that starts at about 2,500 meters or about like uh, 10,000 feet. And it's headache and nausea, like when you haven't had a big drink the previous night, but you're you know, at, at altitude when you have this headache and nausea. That's basically uh, the first signs of acute mountain sickness, and they can be life-threatening, go on to become cerebral edema and pulmonary edema. That's water in the lungs, water in the head. So it can be life-threatening. How can you minimize your chances of suffering from altitude illness? Well, you know, by making sure you're aware about this disease entity. And uh, once you're aware, then you will not go up too high too fast. So the, the suggestion is that after 10,000 feet or 3,000 meters, you don't, you know, you go up uh, that, that your uh, previous night uh, altitude should not be more than your your I'm sorry the present so tonight's altitude should not be more than four or five hundred meters from the previous night you know increase of more than four or four or five hundred it should not be so that your body gets time to acclimatize so going up slowly in other words you know taking time and going up slowly and not going up too high too fast so that's the main uh, issue here. How can we increase awareness of altitude illness? Well, you know, so altitude illness, that, this is a very good question. Uh, there is not enough awareness about this. So, for instance, very recently in Mount Kilimanjaro, uh, which is like a standalone mountain in Kenya, uh, there was a, a tragedy there. A racing car driver by the name of Mr. Zulu, South African driver, on a you know who was planning a five day. In fact, went up on this five day trip to Kilimanjaro. So they're they're going up too high too fast, and uh, he died. So very, very tragic. But from the tragedy, I hope that people you know will learn that they should go up slowly. That uh, you know so so th these are uh, this this is important in the Himalayas. There is. There, there is much more awareness about altitude illness. And I think the focus now needs to be on this mountain, Kilimanjaro, which, you know, like it's politically incorrect, but I, I think it's like a killer killie, you know. So awareness needs to be generated and, and maybe taking advantage of this tragedy, but, but to good effect to help other people. What are the most important lines of research that have developed in the past five or ten years? So probably the most important line of research that has developed is uh, in the field of genetics. And uh, Peter Radcliffe from uh, the Nuffield Department of Medicine is involved. It's called, the, it's, it's a protein, it's the discovery of this HIF protein, hypoxia inducible factor protein. And if you have an overrepresentation of this protein, then you are like better able to adapt to high altitude. And that's why the Tibetans, it seems, have an overrepresentation of this protein and they're able to adapt better. Now, this HIF protein, this factor, hypoxia inducible factor, seems to be important. It seems like it's a master switch and, and it, it impacts on cardiovascular problems, on, on uh, cancer problems. So, so it's, it's a bigger deal than just high altitude hypoxia. Why does your research matter? Why should we put money into it? Because people live at high altitude and travel to high altitude, you know, like in populations in South America, in the Tibetan Plateau, you know, South America Altiplano, there are thousands and thousands of people that live there. So it's important, you know, and there is, we, we sort of restricted our discussion to acute mountain sickness, but there's something called chronic mountain sickness that people in these, people living at high altitude suffer from. So it's an important area, uh, and, and people travel up to high altitude, you know, millions go up to high altitude. So, so it's obviously, there's a lot, lot of human movement, so obviously this is a very important area that does not get enough emphasis. How does your research fit into translational medicine within the department? So, in terms of translational medicine, one of the things that we studied um, 
is that there is a drug which prevents altitude sickness, and it's very well known. It's called Dimox. But this big dose of Dimox was suggested prior to our studies. You know, they suggested 750 milligrams, and this was a big study that came out in the BMJ in the two, in, yeah, around 2000. Uh, and, and we said, look, we think this is not true. We have anecdotal evidence of much lower doses. So, so we clearly showed that a lower dose that caused less side effect, like 250 milligrams, maybe even less is what the data is showing. But our data clearly showed that rather than giving this huge, hefty dose of 750 for the prevention of acute mountain sickness, you can get by with a lowly 250 milligram. So, so that's one area where, where I think we've been helpful. And the, a very important thing that we've started focusing on is, you know, you think thousands of tourists go up to high altitude, but millions of pilgrims, you know, with what, what is called comorbidities, with diabetes and all, they're not your trekkers and climbers, but, but they're, they're people who, who want to go to these sacred sites up at, you know, very high altitudes, like there's a high altitude sacred lake, in, in South Asia, you know, many lakes like this, and people, pilgrim, pilgrims go up, they make a pilgrimage, millions of them go up, as opposed to just thousands of tourists. So we need to focus on keeping the tourists safe, but we also need to keep the pilgrims safe. Uh, they're older, poorer, and more vulnerable, and we're focusing attention on this. Thank you for talking to us today. Thank you.